Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the In News series. My name is Pooja Devedi. So, a question that must come to every mind on our earth is are we alone in this universe or not? Either way, it is terrifying. But why am I saying all this? Because James Webb Space Telescope has for the first time ever discovered an exoplanet. What are exoplanets? What are the types of exoplanets? Why do we need to explore them? And where does India stand with respect to exoplanets? We are going to discuss all that in today's brief episode. From the perspective of GS Mains Paper 3 and from the perspective of GS Mains Paper 1, along with preliminary examination, the facts and the analytical portion both are important. These are the many things that we are going to discuss. Okay. So first, let us talk about the news piece. James Webb Telescope discovers its first Earth-sized exoplanet and what are exoplanets. So this is actually from the Indian Express, the news, but we have authenticated this news from the website of NASA, European Space Agency and other authentic websites as well. So the discovery is about an exoplanet. This exoplanet has been named as LHS 475b and it is roughly the same size as that of the Earth. It is 41 light years away, about 41 light years away and it orbits to a, it orbits very close to a red dwarf. Red dwarfs are the coolest of these stars and they are in the process of dying. And once fusion is no longer available for red dwarfs to power them, they will turn into a white dwarf. Okay? And it orbits very close to a red dwarf star and completes a full orbit in just two days. Alright? Moving ahead. Now, we have to talk about James Webb Space Telescope as well. It is an infrared observatory. That means it observes the whatever emissions are coming from the universe in the infrared um, category. And it will complement and extend the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope. That means it is the successor to Hubble Space Telescope. It builds upon the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope. And it does so in longer wavelength coverage and greatly improved sensitivity. And that is why we could see such beautiful pictures of the universe last year, which was sent by Webb Space Telescope only. It is also known as JWST or Webb. It is NASA's largest and most powerful space science telescope. It also has approximately 6.5 meter primary mirror, which gives it, uh, you know, its power more definition. It was launched on December 25th, 2021 and it studies every phase of the history of our universe. So, it can be asked in your prelims examination, what does it basically do? Ranges from first luminous glow after the Big Bang. That means how did the universe originate? It is studying that as well and to the formation of the solar systems which is capable of supporting life on Earth-like planets to the evolution of our own solar system. So, it is a very hugely, you know, focused project of NASA that we can name. And it was launched from the Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spacecraft in French Guinea on the northeastern coast of South America. Moving ahead, it is an orbiter type, remember that as well. Earlier, it was named as Next Generation Space Telescope. But in September 2002, it was named after James Webb who was a NASA administrator, alright? And it is a joint collaboration effort of NASA, European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. This is a sure shot preliminary fact that you have to remember. The NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, it is managing the development effort and the main industrial partner is Northrop Grumman, which is the Space Telescope Science Institute. It is operating the James Webb uh, after its launch. So, remember all these things because it could be asked in your examination. Other discoveries if we have to go through, then it captured dying star's final performance, which was done so on uh, July 12th last year, about a new discovery of the James Webb Telescope, which details the southern ring planetary nebula that was previously hidden from the astronomers. Okay. It also discovered a collection of five galaxies. It shared a stunning view of never before seen details of galaxy group, which is known as Stephen's Quintet. So, remember that as well. Okay. And it is a collection of five galaxies also. Remember that. And seen in both near and mid infrared. Alright. And then Jupiter, moons and more. 
On July 14, 2022, NASA uh, shared its first images of the solar system captured by JWST and which shows Jupiter as well as some of its moons and rings. It highlights the planet's massive storm as well, uh, which is the great red spot of Jupiter. We already know that. So it was done by JWST as well. So it also tracked an asteroid for the first time. So there are many firsts for JWST. All right. Moving ahead now, it is also important that we know about the discoveries of this particular telescope that it is giving us so much information. It is helping the scientists and the astronomers to understand our, our entire system uh, that ranges from solar system to our galaxies to our universe as a whole. So first of all, we have to discuss what are exoplanets as well. When we move forward, we are going to move forward with this only. Any planet that is beyond our solar system, these are named as exoplanets. And these can be of a wide variety of sizes, from gaseous planets like Jupiter to Earth-like planets and even to Mercury-like planets. They can be hot enough to boil a metal or even locked in deep freeze. That, is, that means it has a huge variety. They, they can orbit their stars so tightly that the year lasts only for a few days and they can orbit two suns at once as well. So these are the films related features that you have to remember. Some exoplanets are even sunless rogue and they wander around the galaxy without any, uh, any object to go around. So they can be so many varieties, so many varieties of exoplanets. See, the actual uh, development around exoplanets started since 1990s. But the first one ever, first exoplanet ever to burst out in the world was 51 Pegasi b. It is a hot Jupiter orbiting a sun-like star 50 light years away. And actually the watershed came in 1995 from when we got more than 5000, since then we have discovered more than 5000 exoplanets and their size and mass are the main features on which we base them as exoplanets or they are not planets at all. A strange gap in planet size, the radius valley is there, okay, or it is known as the Fulton gap after Benjamin Fulton who was the author of the paper researching that only. So NASA's Kepler spacecraft uh, says that planets of certain size range are rare, okay. That means there are certain category of planets, the size of which makes them rare enough. Okay, this was told by the NASA's Kepler spacecraft. Specifically, we are talking about planets who range between 1 to 5 and 2 times the size of Earth, which would place them among the super Earths. So, remember super Earths as well. Planets that reach this size quickly, they attract thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium, then they become balloon, they balloon up with gases, turning them into a balloon planet like we have gases planet like Jupiter, okay, while certain planets are smaller than this limit, 1.5 to 2 times smaller than the earth, so what becomes of them is that they do not attract a thick atmosphere, they lose their atmosphere, turning them into a rocky terrestrial surface, okay, so remember all this, moving ahead. On the other hand, the smaller planets that orbit very close to their star, they could be the cores of Neptune-like world that had their atmospheres stripped away because of the blowing of the gases from the star. And explaining the Fulton gap will require a far better understanding of how planetary systems form in large. But let's talk about the types of, we can say, exoplanets. So there are certain types. First is terrestrial. These are Earth-sized or smaller, mostly made of rock and metal. Okay, and some could possess oceans or atmospheres and perhaps other signs of habitability. So, this is the most important exoplanet that we are looking for. Other ones are Neptune like, this is similar to size that of our own Neptune and Uranus as well, with hydrogen or helium dominated atmosphere. So, in Neptune like planet, hydrogen and helium dominate. And many Neptunes not found in our solar system are smaller than Neptunes, but they are larger than the Earth. Then there are super Earths, 1.5 to 2 times larger than our Earth. These are typically terrestrial or rocky. They are more massive than the Earth, but they are lighter than Neptune. And they might or might not have atmosphere. Then we have gas giants like Jupiter. So the size of Saturn or Jupiter are much larger. They include hot Jupiters, scorching planets in close orbits around their stars. 
science of habitability may not be very promising. There are other, uh, you can say, telescopes or missions that are looking for exoplanets, such as Hubble was there, Swift Gamma Ray Bust Explorer is there, then the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite or TESS, Chandra X ray Observatory, Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, New Star. The Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer on International Space Station. On the International Space Station, then we have the Imaging X-ray Polyrimetry Explorer and the James Webb Space Telescope. Specifically, these belong to NASA in collaboration with other space agencies as well. All right, moving ahead. Now, if we have to talk about why do we even need to know about exoplanets? First of all, the biggest mystery is how our solar system and universe in large originated. What are these planets made of? Are there resources available on other planets similar to the resources that we have on our earth so that the problem of scarcity can be done away with? Also, is there another earth-like world so that we can get a planet B if we, of course, if we tend to, you know, do the same as we are doing right now. If we completely harm our earth, do we have any other place to go or not? Whether life could exist outside our solar system or not. Other than that, are we alone in the universe or not? This is the most thrilling of the questions. Okay, so moving ahead. Now let's discuss India and exoplanet. In 2018, it was very first for the Indian science to, you know, get a hold of exoplanet. This was done by Ahmedabad uh, teams of scientists. This discovery of the exoplanet came after a team from the Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad spent one and a half years to study uh, the light that was emitted by the planet's host star epic 21194521 and since then we are seeing that with the help of artificial intelligence we are on the we are having a streak of discovering more planets like this news of 2022 february 10th says indian astronomers discovered 60 earth like exoplanets using new ai method so that is so amazing now, if we have to move forward, just keep in mind that if you are going to answer the next question that I will ask correctly, I will take your names in the next segment. Let me take the names of those who have answered my last question correctly. So, the correct answer was option C. N. Vaishnavi, Vikas Kumar, Rupal, Archana, Daksha, Anju, Keshika, Krishna, Shitaj have answered it correctly. Then, we also have Bhargavi, Tushita, mm. Anuj, Srinivas, Rishabh, Pallavi, Bausul, then uh, Tudor, Anita and Sagarika. Thank you so much for answering the last question. Answer the next question as well. Thank you so much for watching.